Hello YouTube, this is Largo64. Uh, this will be another video on methods of execution. Execution. The favorite use, euphemism for that is the ultimate sanction. Sounds kind of sanitary, doesn't it? Euphemisms are intended to make terrible things sound nicer. Like military referring to civilian death, dismemberment, and maiming as collateral damage. Sort of like the building next door had a few windows blown out. Sounds a lot better than the truth, doesn't it? The death certificate of an, ex of an executed felon tells it like it is, however. The cause of death is listed as homicide. That's another word for murder. In any other context it would be. Uh, and I'm inclined to think that when the state does it, it's still murder. Okay, anyway, uh, lethal injection. Is it really painless? Do executions carried out in this way really go well? And who does the needle work anyway? Doctors? No, not usually. Most doctors are very uh, reluctant to take part in an execution uh, because the very first part of the oath that they take as doctors is, first, do no harm. Doctors will be standing by during executions uh, in order to pronounce death. They uh, stand by with a stethoscope and so forth to, um, to inform the executioner when his job is done. Um, now, the execution of the condemned in most states involves three separate injections in sequential order. Sodium thiopental is an ultra-short-action barbiturate, an anesthetic agent capable of rendering the prisoner unconscious in a few seconds. Now, it works very quickly, but uh, the problem with it might be that it doesn't work long enough. Now, uh, authorities insist that uh, its effects last long enough that the person doesn't feel any pain while the other drugs are being administered. But, as you will see with some of these botched executions, Things take a little longer than they sometimes expect them to, and the uh, initial uh, sodium pento, uh, pento, uh, thio, pentothal, or thiopental as it's called now, um, doesn't last as long as it's supposed to. The second drug is called pancuronium, a non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, which causes complete, fast, and sustained paralysis of the skeletal striated muscles, including the diaphragm and the rest of the respiratory muscles. This would eventually cause death by asphyxiation, even without the third drug, which is potassium chloride. The administration of potassium chloride stops the heart and thus causes death by cardiac arrest. A study published in 2007 in a peer-reviewed journal called Plo, Plo S. Magazine, Medicine suggested that the conventional view of ethical injection leading to an invariably peaceful and painless death is questionable. I'm going to give you some examples now of some botched executions. On December 13, 2006, Angel Nieves Diaz was not executed successfully in Florida using a standard lethal injection dose. Diaz was 55 years old and had been sentenced to death for murder. Diaz did not succumb to the lethal dose, even after 35 minutes, necessitating a second dose of drugs to complete the execution. After performing an autopsy, the medical examiner, Dr. William Hamilton, stated that Diaz's liver appeared to be normal. One of the officials at the execution said that the problem was that his liver was bad or something like that. But, uh, but that the needle had been had pierced through Diaz's vein into his flesh. The deadly chemicals had subsequently been injected into soft tissue and not into the vein. The execution of Rommel Broom was abandoned in Ohio on September 15, 2009, after prison officials failed to find a vein after two hours of trying on his arms, legs, hands, and ankle. This has stirred up intense debate in the United States about lethal injection. December 13, 1988, in Texas, Raymond Landry was pronounced dead 40 minutes after being strapped into the execution gurney and 24 minutes after the drugs first started flowing into his arms. 
Two minutes after the drugs were administered, the syringe came out of Landry's vein, spraying the deadly chemicals across the room toward witnesses. The curtain separating the witnesses from the inmate was then pulled and not reopened for 14 minutes while the execution team reinserted the catheter into the vein. Witnesses reported hearing at least one groan. Now that would not have been possible if the, um, uh, if the person had been completely unconscious. He would not have been groaning. He wouldn't, wouldn't have known anything or felt anything. On September 12, 1990, in Illinois, Charles Walker, because of equipment failure and human error, Walker suffered excruciating pain during his execution. According to Gary Sutterfield, an engineer from the Missouri State Prison who was retained by the state of Illinois to assist with Walker's execution, a kink in the plastic tubing going into Walker's arm stopped the deadly chemicals from reaching Walker. In addition, the intravenous needle was inserted pointing at Walker's fingers instead of at his heart, prolonging the execution. Yeah, I'll bet. May 7, 1992, in Texas, Justin Lee May. Uh, May had an unusually violent reaction to the lethal drugs. According to one reporter who witnessed the execution, May gasped and coughed and reared against his heavy leather restraints, coughing once again before his body froze. Associated Press reporter Michael Gratchik wrote, Compared to other executions in Texas, May's reaction was more violent. He went into a coughing spasm, groaned and gasped, lifted his head from the death chamber gurney, and would have arched his back if he had not been bel belted down. After he stopped breathing, his eyes and mouth remained open. Um... May 3rd, 1995, in Missouri, Emmett Foster, um, seven minutes after the lethal chemicals began to flow into Foster's arm, the execution was halted when the chemicals stopped circulating. With Foster gasping and convulsing, the blinds were drawn so the witnesses could not view the scene. Death was pronounced 30 minutes after the execution began, and three minutes later the blinds were reopened so witnesses could view the corpse. According to William Mal Gum, the Washington County coroner who pronounced death, the problem was caused by the tightness of the leather straps that bound Foster to the execution gurney. It was so tight that the flow of chemicals into the veins was restricted. Foster did not die until several minutes after a prison worker finally loosened the straps. The coroner entered the death chamber 20 minutes after the execution began, diagnosed the problem, and told the officials to loosen the strap so the execution could proceed. In an editorial, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch called the execution a particularly sordid chapter in Missouri's capital punishment experience. May 8, 1997, in Oklahoma, Scott Don Carpenter. Carpenter was pronounced dead some 11 minutes after the lethal injection was administered. As the drugs took effect, Carpenter began to gasp and shake. This was followed by a guttural sound, multiple spasms, and gasping for air until his body stopped moving three minutes later. So clearly, the uh, sodium pentothal or pentothiol did not work or it was too short acting even though it was it was it was quick they they say it's very fast acting but it doesn't last long enough um, in june 13 1997 in south carolina michael eugene elkins uh, because Elkins's body had become swollen from liver and spleen problems, it took nearly an hour to find a suitable vein for the insertion of the catheter. Elkins tried to assist the executioners, asking, should I lean my head down a little bit, as they probed for a vein. After numerous failures, a usable vein was finally found in Elkins' neck. On April 23, 1998, in Texas, Joseph Cannon, uh, it took two attempts to complete the execution. After making his final statement, the execution process began. A vein in Cannon's arm collapsed and the needle popped out. Um, I'm running out of time. I'm going to have to uh, close this up and um, I'll take off on some more in another, in another issue, uh, in another video. I'll be talking about um, the actually painless uh, execution uh, method that nobody uses.
Thanks for